Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Before we get to the report, if you like our style of video and analysis, feel free to show support for Football Game Plan by dropping by our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan and leaving a little something in the tip jar. Every little bit helps us as we continue to improve the quality of our videos and the coverage we enjoy bringing you guys each and every time we put out a project. Thank you again for your support. Austin Hooper out of Stanford leads off our list for the top flex prospects in this year's draft class. He has good inline skills and is also progressing in that area and in that capacity. He reminds me a lot of Michael Rivera when he came out of Tennessee and now plays for the Oakland Raiders. You primarily thought he would be just an H-back type of a guy, but he was very good in the run blocking department or very underrated in that area. I think that you can say the same thing about Austin Hooper, and I see him growing into that type of a role as he moves forward. I also like that he's able to execute all blocks. He has very good hands as well and is also strong at the catch point. Now his feet tend to get sloppy at times during blocks as well as with his hands. I think that's where he's going to have to become a little bit more consistent in his game, which is why right now I think he's better served as a flex guy out in space versus linebackers and safeties. I'm a big fan of Tyler Higby's game out of Western Kentucky. I think he's an excellent receiver from a routes perspective, a movement perspective, and also from a hands perspective as well. He fights through contact real well and is a capable blocker. That's all you can really ask for from a flex guy. Now, he reminds me a lot of Zach Ertz. I do think he has that talent, but he has been a little bit banged up at Western Kentucky. He's not overly powerful at the point of attack, and he's capable, yet he's inconsistent with his technique when blocking on the move. So those are the things he's going to have to clean up as he makes a jump moving forward, but definitely enough talent on the field to warrant a second-round grade from me. Next up is Seth DeValve out of Princeton, who has excellent receiving skills, again, from a routes and hands perspective. He's able to accelerate into his stem and out of his brakes, which is why he's consistently open. I love the fact that he's able to high point the football and has that wide catch radius that quarterbacks love, especially inside the red zone. I think he could play flex or even flanked out wide on occasion. And he's also very good on wham blocks. Now, he has a bit of an injury history. The valve has missed significant time over the last two seasons, more so in 2014. This past year, missed about four to five games or parts of four or five games. For the Tigers. I also think he has to work a little bit more in his blocking department as far as base blocks are concerned. I think he's very good on the move, but as far as base blocks, he has to get a little bit more consistent, and that's going to come in time as he's made the move from wide receiver to tight end. But again, when you look at this guy on film, he grades out for me as a third-round talent and reminds me a lot of Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs. Dari Goodwin out of West Liberty, a Division II program, is a prospect that I saw down at the Baltimore Regional Combine that had an excellent workout and forced me to go back to the tape. And I looked at the film, and he has tremendous hand-eye coordination and athleticism. He also knows how to play above the rim, and he tracks the, the football well and also adjusts to it very well. Now, he's not overly twitchy or sudden. I think because of that, he has just okay run after the catch skills. His blocking is marginal. I think he blocked like a wide receiver, which he was when he came into West Liberty and grew into this H-back tight end type of a role. Now, he does compete well in line. I think that's going to help him out moving forward, but he has that upside that you look for. But as far as receiving skills are concerned, he compares favorably, in my opinion, to Jordan Cameron. Tameric Hemingway out of South Carolina State has very good athleticism. He's a natural hand catcher. I think he gets good acceleration to threaten the seam or voids in his own defense in his routes. Now, he's a non-factor in the blocking department outside of your wham and position blocks. I think he has to add power and bulk to really round out his game in that department. If he can get better in the blocking department, you can move him down inside. But right now, I think he's more relegated to a flex role. Jarrell Adams out of South Carolina is a talented receiving threat. He's a solid route runner that's able to eat up cushion when he gets into his stem. He plays big in the passing game, and what I mean by that is he's a tall guy, and with that long stride, that's why he's able to eat up that cushion. He also plays to his height in the passing game, which makes him a very good intermediate and deep threat. Now, 
playing high can also be looked at as an area of improvement. I think he's better with his hand off the ground. In the blocking department, he has marginal leverage and is also struggling to recover if he's beat initially on base blocks, which is why I think he's better suited on wham, angle, and position blocks. But you look at a guy that I will compare his game to, Ladarius Green had some of the same concerns when he came out of the University of Louisiana. But I do think Jarrell Adams definitely has upside and a bright future. Bryce Williams out of East Carolina rounds out our flex prospect rankings for this year's draft class. He has a good feel for the passing game, above average hands, and he can definitely make the contested catch and high point the football. Now, he lacks physicality to play in line, and he's not overly physical, period. I think he's more of a big wide receiver as opposed to a tight end. I also think the blocking effort is marginal at best. He's going to have to get a little bit more consistent in blocking, and the effort has to be there if he wants to sustain success as a pro. But right now, I do think he has enough to bring to the table as a receiver, which is why he's a threat and on our list.